What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I want to continue my Keyforge Card of the Day series. I did one the other day. I did the first one I'd ever done. I did a video about Key Hammer. Just because Key Hammer's fun. And it's an interesting card that's a little bit different. And that's what I want to focus on in these Card of the Day videos. Finding Keyforge cards which don't always see a huge amount of play. And aren't always on the center stage. But are different and interesting and fun. And I just like talking about Keyforge cards. I'll be honest with you. And I also want to try as much as I can to do these from suggestions. So big shout out to Jan England probably pronouncing that terribly, who suggested a few on the previous video. So we're going to go for Might Makes Right. And if you want to tell me what the next card of the day should be, give me your suggestions in the comment section. And as long as I can, I'm going to try and make sure all my future suggestions come in from you. So Might Makes Right then, it's a Brobnar card that originally came out in Age of Ascension and it gives you an Amber Bonus and it allows you to sacrifice any number of creatures with a total power of 25 or more and if you do, you get to forge a key at no cost. Now, first of all, it's a key cheating card, right? The whole point of key forge is you forge free keys, you win the game. That is literally the name of the game. Keyforge. It's exactly what it says on the tin. And the goal here is extremely simple. Forge free keys faster than your opponent. Anytime you can cheat a key, anytime you can forge a key other than at the beginning of your turn, is a massive advantage. Plus, let's not forget the one card which we do see played a lot, and I've watched a lot of Vault Tour games and it turns up in a lot of decks, is Miasma. And Miasma comes along and says, ha ha ha, you have to skip your Forge a Key step on your next turn. It was also in Call of the Archons and Age of Ascension, which is one of the reasons we see it so much. And it's in Shadows, the most widely played house up to now, so there we go. Well, Might Makes Right forges in the middle of your turn, so even if your opponent plays a Miasma and stops you forging a key at the beginning of your turn, you can still forge a key in the middle of your turn using this. But the thing that makes Might Makes Right such a redonkulous card is that it doesn't cost you any amber to forge. And it is very, very rare to find a card which allows you to forge without spending amber. Now, this isn't the only one, incidentally. There are others out there, but there aren't very many. Now, if we want a quick list, we had Redacted back in Age of Ascension for Logos. That's the one where every time you choose Logos as your active house, you put an amber on it. When you get to four, you forge a key at no cost. But if you take Logos as your house on the first turn, your fifth Logos turn will give you a free key. And that's if you have this on your first Logos turn. It, it just doesn't work. Back in Call of the Archons, though it was reprinted in Age of Ascension, we had Epic Quest, an artifact, and when you played it, you archived each friendly knight creature in play, and it had an Omni ability. If you've played seven or more Sanctum cards this turn, you sacrifice Epic Quest and forge a key at no cost. I find it kind of adorable that it's an Omni ability, meaning you can use it even if Sanctum isn't your active house, when you have to play seven Sanctum cards to use it. I want to find out who's playing seven Sanctum cards on a non-Sanctum turn. <laughs> now, here you really need a deck of a bunch of archiving. You archive a bunch of Sanctum cards, and then at the beginning of your turn, you pick up your archive, play a bunch of Sanctum cards, and then you sacrifice this and forge a key. I have not seen this used in serious competitive play. And Triumph's a very new one, so we still have yet to see exactly how good it's going to be. But it gives you an Amber bonus, and if there are no enemy creatures, you exalt each friendly creature. And then if there are six or more friendly creatures, you forge a key at no cost. As a side note, exalting is where you put an Amber from the common pool onto your creature. So I've used this example a bunch, but we do have Spartasaur. And Spartasaur basically destroys every non-dinosaur creature. So you can potentially use this to wipe your opponent's board and then have six dinos and then do it. It may or may not work. But Might Makes Right is the one that I have seen work in Vault Tours. It can work. 
And the thing is that Might Makes Right is a perfect card for Brobnar. Because Brobnar is the house with the big creatures. Now, it's not the only one with big creatures. When we look at Worlds Collide, the really big creatures we saw coming in were probably Gargantodon and Pterodactyl. And Gargantodon did break the record for largest creature at 16. That's, that's pretty huge, frankly. And Pterodactyl comes in at 12. That's nothing to be sniffed at. Incidentally, the pair of them together would let you activate Might Makes Right. But that's not to say that there aren't a bunch of creatures in Brobnar that can make this work very nicely. Now, interestingly enough, there are eight creatures in Keyforge at the moment that do have a power of 10 or above. Now, three of them are actually in Brobnar. That is Lollop the Titanic from Age of Ascension, Khalifi Dragon from Call of the Archons, and Mega Narp, which is the mega version of regular Narp, from Worlds Collide. So three of the eight are actually in Brobnar, but it's not actually that straightforward. I'm being a little tiny bit disingenuous here, because you see, Might Makes Right isn't in all of the key forge sets. Now we do have legacy cards which come in from previous sets, but Might Makes Right was only in Age of Ascension. So Mega Narp doesn't really work unless Might Makes Right comes in as a legacy card. And Khalifi Dragon doesn't work unless it comes in as a legacy card. Now, having said that, Lollop the Titanic does work very, very nicely here. It's an 11 power creature. And we did, in Age of Ascension, have Blood of Titans, which is an upgrade which gives you an amber bonus and gives a creature plus 5 power. But it's not necessarily just about creatures with power 10 or above. It's nice to look at them as an example, but it's not necessary that they all have power 10 or above. The fact of the matter is, if we go specifically to Age of Ascension, we can see that there are a bunch of powerful Brobnar creatures that come in a little bit lower than 10. We could take the example of something like Groggins. Groggins comes in as an 8 power creature. Well, that's pretty much a third of what you need to pay with Might Makes Right, so that's kind of cool. We had Bellowing Patras 8 comes in as a 7 power creature, so that's going to help us out quite nicely with something like this. King of the Crag or Tireless Crow Crag? Crow Crag? Crow Cag? One of them. They are both 7 power creatures as well. So, we've got a bunch of really powerful creatures that we can use. My point essentially is that this is a key cheating card which works absolutely beautifully in a Brobnar deck. In a non-Brobnar deck, maybe it wouldn't have been quite as good, but it doesn't matter. Because this is Brobnar. And the thing that makes this card so gosh darn good, the thing that really makes it amazing... To go back to a point we made earlier, it doesn't use your amber. So what you can do here is your opponent's up two keys to one, they're looking like they're on for a victory, and then you can just forge at the beginning of your turn, and then forge with Might Makes Right, and then all of a sudden you win the game. You've gone from one key to three immediately. I don't know if this is necessarily better than something like Triumph, and I don't think it's late enough in the lifespan of Worlds Collide to really make that decision. I do feel confident it's better than Redacted and Epic Quest. Epic Quest seems like it might work, but Sanctum really weren't a particularly good or loved house back in Call of the Archons, which I think really did hurt it quite a bit. I've seen Might Makes Right go off in competitive games at Vault Tours. It seems so uniquely, brilliantly suited to Brobnar and the big creatures. Now, it came out in Age of Ascension and it wasn't printed in Worlds Collide, but there's nothing to stop it coming forward into future sets. Obviously, it can come as a legacy card, but I meant actually being printed as a set. Remember that FFG have told us that rare cards are more likely to be brought forward into future sets? So as a rare card, it's more likely we'll 
will be seeing it in the future. I really like Might Makes Right, and I think there are some really good decks that can be built around it. So, I'm giving it four Wossies. I think it's a really fun card. I think in a house like Shadows, you'd have to sacrifice so many creatures, it just wouldn't be worth it. But I think in Brobnar, it can work very nicely indeed. But I'd like to know your opinion. How good do you think this card is? Do you have any decks with this in? Has it been good for you? And of course, give me some suggestions for what my next card of the day video should be. Go nuts in the comment section, but please do remember the rules. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk Key Forge and Final Fantasy and Chrono Clash and a whole bunch of fun games. And please do make sure you're checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.